Patty, you ready? Tell me when. You're good to go. Welcome everyone to Caperd Core Zoom presentations. My name is Patty Supe. I am this year's Caperd president. I hope that you're enjoying these valuable presentations hosted by Caperd. So far, the response has been overwhelming and we are so pleased to be able to pull together these great presenters to offer teachers what they need in these uncertain times. Remember that your professional organization, Caperd, is working hard for you on a daily basis to ensure that you have the resources you need as well as advocating at the state and national level to ensure that our jobs are protected. Remember that behind the scene work is done every day by dedicated volunteers, such as those helping with this webinar today. And this work relies on your membership. If you are a member, be sure to renew your membership. If you're not a member, please consider joining. If your colleagues are not members, encourage them to join. Our job depends on it. Together, we have a larger voice. Now, we, before we bring on our special guest presenter today, we want to let you know that all nine of our sessions so far in this series are available on the Caperd website, along with the resources that are utilized in each presentation. In addition, you can find these presentations on the Caperd YouTube channel, as each session, including this one, is streamed live on YouTube. Our next session planned for this fall just got scheduled. It will be Wednesday, September 16th, with Michelle Tabor. Michelle Tabor is a physical activity program manager for CalFresh Healthy Living from the University of California in Davis. Michelle focuses on integrating physical activity into the CalFresh, CalFresh Healthy Living program that is available to schools throughout the state. Michelle and her team from UC Cooperative Extension will present a course session titled, Don't Underestimate the Power of Physical Activity Breaks on Students' Social and Emotional Learning. During this interactive web webinar, you will have the chance to experience the impact of incorporating physical activity breaks into your classroom routine and learn about digital resources that can be used with all levels of education, whether personal or virtually. You will also learn how a physically active environment can help integrate social and emotional learning to help students deal effectively and ethically with daily changes and challenges. And now, we are excited to present to you tonight's presenter, our special guest, Dan DeJager. Dan is a university lecturer, curriculum writer, and a teacher in, the Sacramento, in Sacramento, California. He has taught diverse groups of students in a variety of settings. Dan is the 2019 Shape America National High School Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Through tonight's presentation, Teaching at the Unschool, Dan will share his story of starting a program at a school with no gym, no department, and no equipment. It was much like distance learning. He is constantly reflecting and trying to make his program better. So he will share his story with you and let you know what he's figured out so far. So remember to keep up through Capert email and social media for announcements of our future presentations. And so now I'd like to present Dan Jager. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Thank you for Capert for having me. Um, these are interesting times, but you know we're all on the same team here. Capert does so much for teachers in California, physical education teachers in your state organizations. If you're in another state, please support them. Uh, keep this going. Um, we're all in this together, that's for sure. So. There we go. All right, I'm gonna tell a little story tonight. Um, so just relax, right? For many of us, this is the first week back, maybe the second week back. Take a deep breath. In our story, um, there's gonna be some lessons along the way and you're gonna have an opportunity to participate as well through the chat. So uh, feel free to do so, you're invited to do that. All right, so our story. Our story ends here, or this is where we are right now. It's this weird place, right? Here we are, remote learning, some of us, distance learning. Still, six months later, hybrid learning. You're there half the time, you're not there half the time, okay? 
or maybe you're back. Maybe you're back the whole time, but you've got to make sure you keep distance between students and you've got to watch your equipment. It's a really strange place. We find ourselves here. Now, I've kind of been here a little while. It's definitely ramped up a little bit, but I've been here a little bit. Um, so welcome to the strangeness. I'll tell you a little bit about what I've learned and uh, we'll help each other along the way. So my story starts here. It's about Christmas time. You see my picture here. Uh, this is my wife in the back. She's holding our newborn baby. Now, this is Henry. Henry was about two months old and pretty crazy time with a two month old, um, especially when you've never had a newborn before. That's my other son, Hunter, right here. My oldest son, Hunter, He's he was five at the time, but we adopted him when he was two. So we kind of missed this stage. And here we are, older parents with, with a newborn, we didn't know what to do. I had, you know, I, there was, a lot of folks who knew more of what to do and had more experience, much younger than me. Um, but it was a it was a crazy time, kind of like we are right now. We've kind of just been thrown into this thing with no rules, no guidelines, a little information, but not too much. And here we are, Christmas time. My son, he has this Christmas play he has to do, or he's doing with his school, which is exciting because we're going to go out as a family with the baby, which didn't happen very often. But here we were. We were going to go out. We were going to go to his Christmas play. Now, part of going to the Christmas play was bringing a treat, was bringing some kind of dessert to share with others. So my wife sent me to the grocery store to find some cookies. So we drove up in the car. I went into the grocery store to look for some cookies. Now, this is actually a major decision here. What kind of cookies do you bring to this, to this, uh, this play? Because um, you want to bring something nice that everyone can enjoy and those kind of things. So in the chat, what's your favorite cookie? All right, I'm not able to see that chat, but I'm peanut butter cookie, <laughs> chocolate chip, chocolate chip, oatmeal raisin. Nice peanut butter. Any peanut butter fans out there? I don't sugar see cookies. No nope. sugar. There's a sugar. No. Oh, there is one sugar. Oh, there's the sugar ones. All right, and an oatmeal chocolate chip. <laughs> Peanut butter. There we go. Oh man, Snickerdoodles, those are my favorites of the kid. Well, I gotta rush in, I gotta get these cookies. I gotta make my decision quickly. I did settle on the sugar cookies with the frosting on top. They're pretty, very Christmassy up. I thought it would be, I thought it would be good. Um, but I was in a hurry, but on the way in, I saw, I saw someone I thought I knew. It was a teacher friend of mine and our paths have crossed like several times. We went to college together. He taught in the same district as me. Um, he became an administrator up where I live. He came back to my district just back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, I'm in a hurry. I don't really have time to talk right now. Wouldn't be nice to say hi, but I gotta go. I rush to the checkout stand and boom, the cookies fall on the floor. Now, that's a bummer that the cookies fell on the floor, um, but it all kind of happened for a reason. You see, that friend I ran into comes up to me. He says, the, the checkout guy says, hey, I'll get you another box of cookies. While I'm standing there, that friend comes up with his wife. And his wife says, hey, you know, we've been talking about you. We've been thinking about you. We think you might be a good fit for unschool. It's a school in our district that, that just opened up. Um, and we think we'd be a good fit for it. You should apply for it. Now, unschool, strange name. It had only been around a couple of years. Um, actually, it was the second year that it was open uh, and that I'd be applying for. They hadn't had a physical education teacher. The students actually hadn't had much for physical ed education at all. Um, and here I was being asked, you know, to consider this position and maybe applying for it. And it's a very, very interesting spot from what I had heard about it. So I said, uh, okay, I'll think about that. I said, you know, they're like, well, you think it'd be good. We don't want to, we don't want a shade sitter. I said, what? A shade sitter. Yeah. You know, some PE teachers, they're shade sitters. They set up their little umbrella. They sit in the corner, um, you know, have the students run, play games. We don't want that. We want our students to learn some movement skills and, um, you know, really be engaged with the classes. So this kind of actually made me sad. Um, and this brings us to our first lesson. Lesson one, don't be a shade sitter. No matter what, no matter what position we're in, others are watching us. And there are folks in our profession who do not have a good reputation. 
And this is sad, but it's true. And this is a harsh reality of it. Um, you know, I've, I've heard stories, my wife's a teacher as well, and she would tell me what her PE teacher at her school was doing. You know, students would run a mile every day, run a mile. And then when they were done, they got to play soccer. And the whole time the teacher would just yell at the students. That's, that's a shade sitter. That's not what we want. Um, even during the remote learning, we have to do our best. And it's hard. It's really hard. And so many of us are doing our best. And if you're here in this session, you probably are doing your best and you're trying to find new ideas. Um, keep doing that, even though it's hard. Because there are some districts and they're eliminating physical education teachers during the distance learning because they don't think we have value. An, ex an example, my, my own son's school. Um, the budget came, it was coming down. They thought they weren't gonna have money for physical education teachers. Uh, they put it out in the budget. I wrote letters as a, from a parent's point of view said physical education teachers at the elementary level are super important. You need to have them. And in the, in the a couple months or a month later, PE teachers are back in the budget. So they had the money for them. They found the money for them. But then, then they had to make a decision to go to remote learning because of COVID-19 and what was going on in our county. So they made that decision. And when they made that decision, they decided to eliminate those physical education teachers again at the elementary level. Now it's tough, but I know one of the reasons they made that decision is because during the crisis last year, one of my, one of my former student teachers in that district as well, he kept making lessons, he's sending videos, he's going to all these teaching things. My son's physical education teacher never showed up, never checked in with my son once, never showed up with his class once. His other teacher, no. My friend who was also a student teacher in the district said, they're not really doing much. They're just on the side, kind of just watching, kind of shade sitting, and we can't do that. So here, we gotta keep moving. We gotta keep moving forward. We gotta keep advocating for our profession. This is a rare opportunity to show that physical education is important, no matter the setting, even at home, and bridge that gap between home and our classroom environment. Okay. So back to the story. Now, here I was, unschooled. They asked me to go to unschool. Well, this is all I knew about unschool was this video right here. I had seen it online. Um, I'm gonna share that with you a little bit. Let's see if it works. This was the promotions for the, uh, for the unschool um, as they opened it up, try to let students know uh, what unschool was all about. Passion-based learning is finding your hidden talents and using them to enhance your learning rather than putting them on hold just to meet the standards of a rubric. Okay. That was, that was unschool. That's what I knew about it. Um, I was like, all right, so there's no walls. It's passion-based learning. What does, what does all of this mean? Um, so 
If you can change one thing in the chat, if you can change one thing about schools, what would it be? Because these folks, so go ahead and respond there. Because these folks definitely, uh, they had some great ideas, some things that are very different, very different from the traditional setting. A school built around play, a school built around passion, class desks. This. Somebody said no teach to the test. No teaching to the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't teach the test at unschool. Students teach for. Uh, Uh, somebody's asking, why can I not see the chat? I'm not sure. The students drive the curriculum in there with their interest. Okay. I'm gonna do a quick split right here. Having some internet issues. Somebody else has said individualized and coached to find something they really want to do. Um, yeah. For sure. And that is so much of what we got. Um, at the unschool. All right. So, yeah, if you had that opportunity, you would take it. And that's what this, that's what this, uh, the staff had done. The administration, um, the district decided to do something completely new, completely different. Um, and it is very different. So we're talking no schedules. We're talking, yeah, <laughs> it's different. I interviewed for the job. I got the job. Um, and then I, I heard a little bit more about the students I'd be working with um, at Unschool. The staff, I listened to the staff and this is what they told me. They said, well, the students really haven't had physical education, um, much of it anyway, for a year. There was another teacher there credentialed credential to teach it, but it definitely wasn't the emphasis. And most of the high school students, well, they've kind of had a bad experience with physical education in the past, the middle school level. Um, so they don't really like it, um, but they really like video games. Hmm. Lesson two, listen, listen to other staff members. We're all in this together. They can help us and we can help them. Listen to students. What do they enjoy? What do they not enjoy? What do they have access to? Listen and adjust your curriculum and instruction. Even in our setting right now, we can ask our students. We can ask, hey, what do you have access to? Um, at home to work out with? What can you do? Who can you go out on walks with so that you're safe? Um, you know, what, are you, what activities you enjoy? Doesn't matter the setting, those things are really important. And based on that, you can adjust your curriculum and instruction. So now I actually do a formal survey at the start of every year, asking the students what they enjoy, asking them how they're being active. This year, I actually asked them, how are you being physically active during the pandemic? And if you're, if you're running into obstacles, what are those obstacles? So I can help them overcome those obstacles by sharing some physical literacy concepts with them to help them overcome so that they can be physically active for life, right? And many of you have seen Terry Drain's What's Your Why? And that's what it is, is it's physical literacy. If physical literacy is your why, then we wanna help them do that in the real world. And we have this rare opportunity to do that in a real world setting. So another piece that I'll often do is in the Zoom chats or in the Zoom sessions, I'll use the chat to ask students questions and get those responses. Um, and so that gives me information so that I can adjust the curriculum instruction from there. So the other thing that I noticed um, is because of, their negative, because of their negative correlation with PE teachers, and it was really hard. Um, I had a negative experience as a growing up in physical education as well. So I kind of got it a little bit. Um, I had to change my messaging. So instead of being a physical education teacher, a PE teacher, I was a physical literacy advisor, a wellness advisor. So I'm the physical literacy and wellness advisor at, at our school right now. Okay? So you can change your messaging as well based on what students are telling you um, to try and make it more friendly towards them. All right, so going into this new situation, there were several systems that I had to learn. 
I'm not going to get into them in too much detail. Lyft was our assessment program, though, and it was our platform we were using for assessments. Most of you probably never heard of it because it hasn't been around very long. They were kind of just trying it out on us. We were one of the few schools trying it. Um, so now we're learning a new program that's constantly changing as they are trying to make the program better for the schools that are using it. But when you're using a competency-based program, because that's how we, I assess my students based on mastery of com competencies, um, this was very handy for us. But a huge learning curve, Google Drive. We're using, so many of us are using the Google Drive right now. If you're doing distance learning, you're using that Google Drive to have students share their work with you. And then SCED was how we scheduled classes. Our students didn't have schedules. They didn't have bells. They had to sign up for classes to show up, um, kind of like a college kind of system. And so we were using SCED to do that. So I had to learn three new systems all along the way. And so many of us are doing that right now. Here's a lesson I learned. When it comes to learning new systems, give yourself some break. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself a break, okay? Learning to new technology takes time. You're not gonna be able to do it all. You just need to work on the critical. What's critical? What is the most critical thing that you need to learn to move forward? We've been pushed into a lake and we have to learn how to swim in the moment. There's lots of systems, lots of ideas. Your schools or your districts might even be having some new, uh, some new concepts they want you to focus on. And that's even more challenging right now. So learn what you need to learn for now and then start experimenting one thing at a time. Try one new thing at a time. So I get that, we'll get those bases down first, okay? Don't expect what you're doing to be perfect when it comes to technology. I know I'm on Twitter a lot and there are some amazing ideas out there and I'm like, oh, why aren't I doing that? Why can't I figure that out? It's okay, it's okay. Try one little thing and then get that down and then try something new. That's all right, all right? All right, so in the chat, what is one simple technology app that you've learned during these times um, that has helped you the most in your current situation? In just one sentence, one technology app you've used and how it has helped you in the current situation. I'm gonna help each other out here, learn some new things. Google Drive, Google Slides, Google Classroom. I'm just now learning Google Classroom. It's one step at a time. Organizes things for sure. YouTube, so many awesome resources on YouTube. Kahoot. Another great one. All right. Flipgrid. Did you see Pear Deck? Pear Deck. Awesome. All good things to check out for sure. Right? Don't overwhelm yourself. But when you see when you see an idea like, oh, that might work for this lesson or that might work for this concept. Check it out. Give it a try. But it's okay if it's not perfect yet. All right. So here I was learning all these new systems, plus, plus I had to uh, I had to figure out how it was gonna work. Everything was competency-based, a uh, brand new program, uh, not meeting with my physical education students every single day. They were signing up for these seminars that I'd set up. Um, and how do I track all of that? So in the end, I came up with 72 competencies that the students had to meet by the time they graduated. Um, and it was a combination of the Shape American National Outcomes and the California State Standards and all the California physical education requirements because I wanted to make sure I included all those. And then because it was the unschool and I could do what I wanted, um, I made sure that they had four years of physical education like they should so they could learn all those skills and the physical literacy that goes into it. It was unschool after all, so I could change the rules if I wanted. 72 competencies, that's, that's how it was gonna work. Well, lesson four, 
have high expectations, but be prepared to adjust. 72 competencies, as I talked to students, was actually too overwhelming. Um, some of the advisors as well were like, this is a bit much. So what did I do? Well, I didn't really take too much out. I just adjusted it. I changed my messaging again, and then I made it 24 outcomes. These are the different outcomes you should reach by the time you graduate our high school. And those, 20, those 24 outcomes became four portfolios that the students kept each year. There was a year one portfolio, year two, year three, year four, and I'll show those in a second. Most of it's still there, but it's just less intimidating. So how's that relate to us? If you're in a setting and you're back at the school setting, you're limited on what activities you can do. If you're home, you're doing remote teaching, you can't do what you could do in the classroom. If you're hybrid, now you're split up and you're probably teaching one thing to one group and teaching that same thing to the next group during the week. We have to get essential. We have to let go of some things. And I know I started with this with don't be a shade sitter, but we have to let some things go. We can let some things go and not be a shade sitter at the same time. We can let some things go and still do our job and still help students become physically literate. We just might have to stretch ourselves a little bit more, learn some more dances, teach some more fitness skills, rely a little more on health-related fitness, teach more concepts, really delve into that social emotional learning piece, maybe incorporate some reading and writing, use equipment in new ways, find some new, new approaches to lessons that we've done in the past. We've got to take some things out a little bit, but just change our messaging and change our approach. And that's an okay thing to do. So what did my portfolios end up looking like? Well, I'll share with these with you because you might get some ideas or maybe it helps you kind of drill your, what you're doing down into the most important pieces, especially if you're on remote learning. There's only so much we can do um, from where we are right now. Year one, students have knowledge and physical competency in a variety of motor skills. They learn to remove barriers to be physically active and be exposed to a wide variety of physical activities while learning basic fitness concepts, movement skills, and concepts. Year two, they're planning for physical activity. They continue to reflect on their physical activity. They continue to apply physical literacy concepts to the physical activities that they're doing. They also meet with a physical education specialist to develop physical literacy, fitness, and wellness plans. And part of that is they actually work with some college students as mentors to help them develop a fitness plan. And those college students are training to become physical education teachers. So they become good mentors for them. I'm involved in the entire process on the Google documents with them, but it's real life, it's real world, and they get to plan for their own fitness. Year three, they become physically active in the community. And right now that's a little hard to do, um, but they can at least plan for it. They can at least be thinking about it. Or maybe they are going out in the community safely and they're, maybe they're doing a little more hiking or walking. Um, maybe doing some different activities than they had tried before. This is an opportunity to help them and encourage them to do so. In year four, they actually have to become a leader in physical activity somehow. So um, that is, that's a huge part of it. And that's a huge part of my program that I'm doing now, but we can think about how that, that can work uh, with all of our situations. So how do we get there? I'm not gonna get into too much detail around this, but activity logs. These are not just physical activity logs, though. They're physical literacy logs, where they don't just track physical activity, but they actually reflect on the physical literacy concepts they are applying to that physical activity and being physically active. For example, you keep track of your minutes, you're physically active this week, and what activities did you do? That piece is in there, right? That's kind of standard for physical activity log. But then there's an additional piece. Hey, how did you overcome obstacles to be physically active this week, right? We had a lot of smoke around where I am um, the last couple of weeks. How are, you, how are you staying physically active, even, even with that going on? Are there, are there activities you could do inside? Are there exercises that you did inside? How did you do that? Reflection is really important on there. And I'm available to help answer those questions if they need some help figuring it out as well. Um, or maybe, maybe they're talking about how they adjusted for the heat or the cold. But it's really trying to take something that's a concept and apply it to real life. And we have, I think we have that rare opportunity right now in the current situation we're in. Also, I have physical literacy sessions uh, the students sign up for. They have different options for how they can meet the different competencies. They sign up um, and they learn through those. And then I also let them lead those and I'll talk about that in a bit. Web assignments to direct them to real world resources. So taking them to choosemyplate.gov, they have to do a little nutrition tip sheet, those kind of pieces, learning about fitness, taking them to reputable web resources so that in the future, when they have a question, they know where to go. And then helping them develop their physical literacy plan. 
So meeting with them, even though we're in the sessions that we are right now, I have office hours and I can meet with those students and help them come up with a plan that works for them to meet their needs. Because in the end, that's what's gonna be most valuable for them to be with that piece. But providing them the time to come to me with questions if they need that support. So what does it look like? We have some pictures here. Um, these are different sessions that I did throughout the year with the students. Again, asking the students what they were interested in. Um, they like the non-traditional quite a bit. And so we have some speed mitten here. We have some can jam. Uh, there's some ultimate frisbee going on, instruction there, um, some disc golf. We actually take field trips, go out and play some disc golf. In the bottom right hand corner, we have a breakout.edu, um, which is like an escape room puzzle game to learn some concepts the students are working on. And they had to do a little bit of physical activity in there as well. I set up a geocaching course around campus, a little scavenger hunt they had to figure out. In the top left hand corner, um, we have uh, what I called 15 minute fitness and they went around. We had no weight room. We have no weight room. We have no gym. Um, my classroom is actually an elementary school stage. Like that's all I've got for an indoor facility. Um, and that's right next to a, a cafeteria that's really like a student union. So students are there all the time. So I'm very limited in the space that I have, but using this back area that no one really uses um, gives them a little bit of privacy and we can do our workouts back there. Um, the students can sign up for as well. Also, we have this awesome opportunity that we're near a river so we can walk down to the river um, and take little field trips there, which is really, really a neat thing. So then um, we have this also awesome opportunity and this kind of just kind of come together with the students in year four becoming leaders, they lead, they lead physical activities. And so um, I have a student leading yoga. I had a student teaching cricket. I had another student teaching boxing. I know, boxing, right? Um, I am meeting with that student one-on-one -on -one beforehand to plan what that lesson is going to look like. I actually have a modified lesson plan template for them, for them to fill out. It's not like, you know, full on, but they need to know the objective. They need to know what their targets are for the lesson, how they're going to structure it, um, how they're going to close it up. I am there with them the entire time, um, watching, supervising, jumping in when concepts come up, um, helping them teach the lesson. Um, making sure that it's safe. That is, has to be by far the number one thing is to make sure the activity is safe uh, for them as well. And so we have boxing here. And then in the middle, um, we actually did something called gladiator school. Um, Cause students were, you know, they're into that kind of, that kind of theme and stuff at my site. And so I was doing the fitness section um, or, you know, able to monitor that. And while uh, Jacob, my student, student was leading the boxing on the other side. Um, which was kind of a neat thing too. Also, we work with the community. We brought in um, a, a Zumba instructor and she would run Zumba with the students as well on a regular basis, which is really cool. So lesson five, we don't have to do it all by ourselves. Um, and especially in this situation right now, there's so much going on. Let others lead, let the students lead. Um, they'll tell you what they're most interested in. So I have a student right now and she had started a dance team and her and I worked on the dance team last year and she's still doing the dance team. Now we're doing it over Zoom. So it looks a little bit different, but we're working together on that dance team. She's leading it, checking in with her. We met this morning. It was great, right? The students also, they're gonna buy in more. Um, they seem to buy in more sometimes when it's another student leading, which is really cool. So work with community members. I hear there's a, there's a martial arts um, facility in the area and they're, they're willing to do Zoom sessions and stuff with students. And so working with them, talking about them, talking to them about those things, making sure it's safe, but working with community members to help them lead as well. Again, then that bridges that connection and the students will know this is where I can go in the community to continue this physical activity. And then during remote learning, find videos of others instructing movement skills. You can't make all, you can make all these videos on your own, but it's hard. Um, find them preview them, make sure they're appropriate, make sure they teach the concepts that you want because not everything out there on YouTube is good, but you know, you know your subject matter, you know physical education, you know what physical literacy looks like, watch it, preview it, credit the instructors that made that video, but then you can actually add your own instruction to support those students as well. If you go to Edpuzzle, um, which is a new technology I learned about this year, um, and I actually learned about it from someone on Facebook or Twitter, which social media has great ideas. If you're not on social media yet, that's now's the time to, um, to get in there and really see what others are doing or going on and doing. It's not, the puzzle's not too hard to figure out. And I could actually add my own notes to the videos and help the students uh, learn the physical literacy even over, even over a distance. So I found that my students 
they were into some different things than my students at my former site. Um, as I talked to them more and got to know about them a little bit more, board games, Dungeons and Dragons, those are actually things that I was into. So I was happy to talk to them about those kind of things. Um, but as I learned more, building connections with them, video games, they're really into video games, and they are. Um, so how do I use that? How do I, how do I use what they care about to help them care more about physical literacy and physical education? Because this was actually a big, a big piece for me uh, being a PE teacher, because I wasn't coming from the outside, many of them having a negative experience. I had to let them know, hey, there's a lot of awesome physical education teachers out there. There's a lot of great physical education teachers out there. Um, you know, and some of them are shade sitters, but some of them aren't. And I'm one of those that I, I don't think I am. And so um, here's who I am. I like board games too. And let's get to know each other a little bit more. Building connections. Okay. Starting a club. So I started a board game club where we learned different board games and we met once a week. I started a Dungeons and Dragons club. Um, we don't have very many students in the school and we had 30 students in the Dungeons and Dragons club. And then they see me as the Dungeons and Dragons guy and then they're more likely to participate in physical education or physical literacy um, when we're doing those different seminars and sessions. And they're more likely to be receptive to what I'm saying. And we can do this now, we can still do this now. We can still have our clubs, we just run them over Zoom. I started a board game club, we're meeting tomorrow. Um, we'll be doing some chess online. We make it happen no matter what. Those connections are so important. They're probably the most important. Right now, more important more than ever, are the connections, the connections between students, the connections between us um, as teachers and our students. And so we just keep we just keep making that happen. And then check in with students, check in with the parents um, over Zoom. If they're, you know, if they're still hanging on at the end, see how they're doing. They're one of the first ones there. Hey, how are you doing? Um, talk to them a little bit. This has been hard. This has been hard on kids. It's been hard on teenagers, especially. Um, they need that social interaction. So we try to build that in uh, wherever, wherever we can. So in the chat, tell me, tell me what clubs have you started um, on your site? And then how could you connect with students in your current situation? What ideas do you have? Let's share with each other. So, what clubs? Virtual running club, where they track their mileage. For sure, why not? That's a fantastic idea. See, that's why we're doing this. I'm getting some good ideas here. This is awesome. Even if you haven't started a club, what are you interested in that the students might be interested in? Virtual DDR, for sure. Right? Obviously, anytime we have a club or any kind of physical activity, we want to make sure the students are safe. And so we always talk about that in the beginning, but just like we do with our classes. But there are opportunities here. Run for the hunt, run for the hungry, 22 years. Wow. And a food drive. That's awesome. That's community, right? That's community. That's what we want our students to do. Huge. Okay, adaptive PE. Yeah, it could be a little tough. Maybe there's some ways though to bring some things in. Getting to know your students, getting to know where they're coming from, finding ways to connect with them, no matter the setting, whether that's on campus or off campus. We want to try to, want to, try to do those things. So here we are. Here we are. We've all been dealt this lump of coal, right? That's, it's not usually a good thing when we think about it. Cold what you get when you're naughty, you know, from Santa. But here we are. We didn't choose. We didn't choose to be here in our current situation. Um, I chose to go into the situation I went into. I knew what I was getting into. I knew it would be a little different. And it's been a blessing. It's been great um, learning so many new things. But this has been pretty hard. It hasn't been easy. Um, the whole situation for us, it's... It's, uh, it's tough. What I'm doing at Unschool, it's not perfect. I'm still learning it. Um, by the way, we're not Unschool anymore. We changed our name. Our name is now Meraki High School. So things are changing. We're not just a school that doesn't have walls or boxes. 
Uh, we have so much more than that. We have advisors that care. We have a system and um, we have a philosophy that meets students where they are, where they can learn real world skills. Um, and so Meraki High School, that's our name. It's a Greek term. It means you leave a piece of yourself, your soul, creativity, or love in your work. When you love doing something, anything, so much that you put something of yourself into it. That's Meraki. Now, so many of you, you're doing that right now. You're doing that with your students. You're putting so much of yourself into this in this current situation. And I know it's tough, but it's making a difference. It's making a huge difference. So you have that May Rocky. Lesson seven. This is tough, but it's going to strengthen us as teachers. We're going to learn new technologies. We're going to learn tools that we can use with our classes. It's going to happen because it has to happen. It's critical, especially if we're doing distance learning. We're going to have new understanding of concepts that we may not have taught before. Maybe you're back on campus, but you've got to learn some new activities. You've got to learn some new, maybe you're hitting outcomes and standards that you hadn't really touched on much before, but now it's a focus because it's one of the few things that you can do. Team sports maybe not happening so much, but again, maybe that health related fitness, that dance, those lifelong activities, different ways of setting up your activities. Those are things we're gonna carry with us. New ways to connect with students and staff in our current setting. I mean, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to go into the student's home on a daily basis. And while that is oftentimes seen as a negative and a hard thing, it can have its positives. We can see where they are. We can have them do an activity where, hey, you've got 20 seconds, grab something you care about and share it with me um, and why it's important to you, right? And they share their dog or their cat or something else, something else that might mean something a lot to them. And we have that, we get to see that, right? We get to connect our classes to reality. It's not just a physical education classroom on a blacktop or in a field. Now it's in their home. How do we make this happen in the home? Because when they leave us, that's what they're gonna have. They're gonna have their home. They're gonna have their community. And that's where they are right now. So we meet them there. We also have this opportunity to show them that we are much more, we are much more professional than how we are represented in the TVs and the movies. I hate it. I hate it how they always have us rolling out a ball or we're intimidating and all that. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. And now students have an opportunity to see that. They have an opportunity to see that we're in the same situation as they are. Here I am doing this presentation from my office, which used to be my bedroom and with, you know, painter's tape on the wall, holding all the things up that I'm trying to keep in my head to make sure I got everything straight, right? For my classes. It's real, they see us as real people. And they see that we're really there for them to make a difference and help them be physically active, physically literate for life, to help them socially, emotionally, um, no matter what, what situation they're in. So I end with this. A diamond is a chunk of coal. We've all been dealt this chunk of coal. But a diamond is a chunk of coal that did really well under pressure. And together, I know that all of us in our situations, as tough as they are, we're making diamonds. But thank you for being here. If you have questions or answers, we'll do those now. You can contact me on email, on Twitter, at the PE Challenge. Uh, www.thepchallenge.com is my website for some resources there. And there are a couple of Shape America blog articles here um, on how to change how others view physical education as well. Thank you. Um, Dan, there was somebody in the chat, I think that came from YouTube. Uh, it's that they asked, they said, I haven't started a club, but students have asked for gamers club, but don't, but I don't know how to connect it to PE. Great question. So, don't worry about connecting it to PE yet. Just worry about connecting to the student um, and the rest will come. So for example, with the Dungeons and Dragons Club, um, I started that with the students. Um, they got to know me more. And I quickly, I, I turned it into Dungeons and Dragons U. And so if you know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, uh, your characters actually have statistics. And so I made their character statistics actually directly correlate to their progress in their classes. And so 
their strength for their character, which is one of the biggest things in Dungeons and Dragons, if you're gonna be a fighter for all my D&D folks out there, um, their strength is actually based on how they were progressing through the physical literacy concepts and the physical literacy competencies. Their, their, their constitution, how well they held up as a character was based on um, was based on their wellness and how they were moving through wellness. And I did that with the different subject areas. So drawing that connection between the two, where the two connected, and there was an incentive system within the game system um, that was based on what had happened in the physical education setting um, was part of it. The other piece of it was taking breaks. So we're gonna play D&D for half an hour, 45 minutes or whatever, and then we're gonna get up and we're all gonna go for a walk and talk to your friends, talk about what's going on in the game, come up with a plan, and then we're gonna come back and play again. Okay, That was part of it. And so uh, don't worry about that one piece so much so far, just build those connections first and try to build those other pieces in as you get there. Thank you, DJ. People are just saying thank you, that it was a terrific presentation and they enjoyed it. Thank you. Inspirational. Thank you for being here. I know it's tough, but for many of us, you know, many folks just starting off and uh, starting off school year. Favorite clever student teacher activity this year and in the past? Um, I would say that the D and D club has been pretty cool just to watch so many students that were um, a little hesitant to get to know me. Um, but then kind of seeing me in a little different light was helpful for sure. Pokemon Go. Yeah, Pokemon Go is a, it's a real deal. I mean, that's part of what my son does, you know, to get active if we can, you know, stay socially distanced and stuff. Um, to go along with that too, like that's another approach that I took. With dance, I allowed them to do uh, We Just Dance as part of the dance. And so that was this different seminar that I offered and I was there helping them, um, supervising them, but they were learning some different dance skills through the we dance because they're into video games and it was amazing they'd come in and i'd leave it um if i was in there doing office hours or whatever they could come in and play it during that time as well and so it was cool to just have them come in and do that a little different approach we have a raised hand we have two raised hands Sorry, Dan, I don't see that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. okay. We, can allow, we can allow him to talk. Yes, I see that now. Okay. Do you have it on your end? Uh, yeah, I'll do that. So uh, this is Joyce. Joyce, go ahead. You want to unmute yourself? Joyce, can you unmute yourself? Uh, I don't I think see. We had one. I think we had one more. Yeah, I don't see the other hand. I'm trying to scroll and I don't see it. Just Joyce. Oh, okay. Cynthia said she started walk up songs for SEL. Oh, sounds like a really great idea. And that is one thing that I've heard is playing music because you zoom, you know, when your zoom starts and the students are coming in, you know, kind of create that positive environment is for sure important. I'm uh, not able to unmute Joyce, so I apologize for that Joyce. All right. Oh, press space bar. Yeah. Did not work. Thanks for the help, though. <laughs> 
Sometimes, sometimes that happens. Isn't this real? This is real, oh. right? We're in a Zoom oh. session. I had half my students couldn't get in yesterday. We had to, we had to troubleshoot it through the email because the district had put an auth authentication process in there and oh. um, the district did the directions didn't always work, so. Joyce, are you there? No, okay. <laughs> okay, well, if, um, if Joyce, if you remember your question, you can feel free to email me and ask if you'd like. Um, happy to help out there or maybe on the video later when it comes out on YouTube. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything else coming in. It looks like Joyce has taken her hand down. So. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for being here, everyone. Um, no, let, if you need me, anything, feel free to reach out. Yeah, just let me close in by thanking everybody for joining our, our course session. And please keep up with social media. You'll see any additional sessions that we have. And I understand my, start my video. Okay, the video. Yeah, I want to thank everybody for being here. I also want to remind you that we have some additional sessions coming up. We have one on the 16th and more that are in the planning stages. So keep up to your, keep up with social media and keep up with the Capered website as well as email blasts coming out to all Capered members. And thank you so much for being here. And we want to thank Dan for his great presentation and for all the information he provided for us today. Remember, you can see this again on YouTube, on the YouTube channel from Capered or the Capered website. If you want any additional resources from Dan, we can ask him to provide some of those that we can put on the Capered website for you. Thank you again.